should she suffer? All right, clap if you think she should suffer. Sup, it's Sydney, and welcome to I literally don't want to do school anymore. Like at all. It could be the fact that I was up for 56 hours straight this past weekend and was standing for 46 of them, and so I'm just tired. It could be the fact that I'm a senior and have been pouring my lifeblood into academics and putting all of my self-worth into it for the past 17 or so years of my life and I'm graduating with a job and so I should just stop caring. Or it could just be the weather. Honestly, I get really moody when it's not 80 degrees and perfectly sunny, which is never the weather here. Before we get into it, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring and approving this video. We love a good Skillshare moment, and let's just learn how to cope with our struggles. Do not, under any circumstances, calculate your grade when you're procrastinating or not in the mood to do school. Don't do it, I swear to God. Also, um, bye, I'm literally a hypocrite. Sorry. This is a PSA to me because the last time I did that was on a final exam last semester because I didn't want to study for it. And I was like, bye, I'm done with school. And you know what? I ate shit on that final because only one of two things is going to happen when you calculate your grade. One, you're going to realize, wait a damn minute. I actually don't need to do that well. Like, Slay, I'm kind of comfortable with getting a 70 and keeping whatever grade I have and then you just don't study at all. And then sometimes you get worse than like the lowest possible thing you could have given yourself. Or on the flip side, you calculate your grade and realize, damn, it's literally hopeless. I'm not gonna get the grade I want anyways. So guess what? You don't do anything. Don't do it, besties. You're either gonna get disappointed or lazier and neither of those are gonna help you. The next tip is a little basic, so sorry, but it actually does work if you can just like bully your brain into doing it and that is to reserve a study room somewhere like on campus that's not your apartment or your dorm room so that you feel like you have to go it's also very helpful if you recruit a friend in this scenario because then if you reserve the study room for both of you it's kind of like in your mind as a scheduled activity that you have to attend and then if your friends like I don't want to go then you can be like no you have to and if you're like I don't want to go then your friend is like no you have to and then when you do go just like leave your phone at home because if you're anything like me you'll build up the stamina and like the willpower to actually go and then you'll just sit on your phone I know it's hard to treat something as mandatory when you know deep down that it's not mandatory but if you can just lie to yourself a little. I promise that it'll work out because you'll get there, you'll see everyone else studying and like being in the vibe of actually doing work and then you realize like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Look at your tuition bill. I'm serious. In college, you don't have to go, but you're literally paying for it. You signed up for this for some reason and you're shoveling out money and then if you don't make good use of it like bye why did you send yourself into debt for no reason don't check your tuition bill if it's gonna send you into a full-blown spiral but like just a little glance I feel like it's just a good reminder that you are paying for college so you should be receiving something in exchange but if you're not doing anything like if you're not going to class if you're not doing assignments you are quite literally paying for nothing. Bag alert, major bag alert. Whenever I don't want to do something, I will do other things that are productive, but are not the things that I need to do. <laughs> for example, I needed to take an asynchronous exam today, which like asynchronous exam, that's like the best possible type of exam. And I was like, no. So obviously, instead of doing that, I cleaned half of my room. And I would like to emphasize the half part because as I started cleaning half of my room, I then got distracted by another task and was like, what if I organized my drawers in my closet again? And so now my room is worse than how we started because the other half looks like that. Hooray. So if my to-do list today said, take a synchronous exam, I would simply look at it 
look away, do whatever I want like cleaning my room, come back to it, add, clean my room, cross off, clean my room, and then just do nothing. So to remedy those types of situations, my piece of advice is to make your to-do list at the beginning of the day or whatever you normally do and then literally do not touch it. This one is like a little cheesy so just bear with me and then I promise you can gag all you want after but take gen ed classes that you're actually interested in. <laughs> I literally took a class about national parks because I heard it was easy. At that point, I had never been to a national park. I didn't care to learn about how national parks came to be, what different species of plants there are. I'm gonna be real, I don't wanna be a park ranger, so I actually gave like zero shit about that class, and I never wanted to do the work for it. So when you're scheduling next time, make sure you pick stuff that sounds interesting. Like, yes, you can go on Rate My Professor and see if it's going to be miserable or not and also let that influence your decision, but don't just pick something because you heard it was easy. It will also make you feel miserable because you're just going to associate any type of learning with stupid classes that you don't care about, and that's simply not true. There are many great learning opportunities, and one of them is Skillshare. I killed that, you can't even lie. I was introduced to Skillshare a few years ago and since then I've done so many different classes that are in all different categories just for my own personal growth that I've gotten to choose. So I've done video editing, I am just now doing an ASL class to learn American Sign Language. The class options are really limitless and one of my favorite parts about Skillshare is you're not paying class by class. It's one set fee so you can really do as much learning as you want within a particular time frame and you're not tied down to a particular class. So if you start taking something and you don't really like it, Bye! You can try a different one. If there's been a skill you've wanted to learn for years or a hobby you've wanted to take up that you just haven't done, Skillshare is the place for you and honestly, like, we need to do that, besties, because I know we have low motivation, but we should better ourselves. So if you're interested, I will have the link in my description and also the first 1,000 of my subscribers to hit that link will be granted a free one month trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today and getting smarter besties because we love intellects in this house. I live in an apartment, but it's the same thing. This next piece of advice is like a little questionable and like I don't know why I do this, but I kind of swear by it. <laughs> what you do when you're staring at an assignment, realizing that you literally would rather do anything else and you just haven't started it and the due date is kind of coming up and you know you should really have at least done some work on it, is you email your professor. And in the email to your professor, schedule a time to meet with them. It can even be during their office hours and just say like, hey, I have a few questions about the assignment. I would love to meet with you and maybe look it over. Once you email your professor, they're gonna be like, oh my God, slay, they're like completing their assignment early and they really wanna check to make sure they're hitting all the boxes, like go off. You're not, but how embarrassing would it be to show up to the meeting with your professor and not have any of it done, or worse yet, to cancel. And it just forces you to do at least some of it so then you avoid complete and utter embarrassment. I've actually done this before and it does work. Take paper notes in class. This isn't gonna work for every class. I know some professors be going at the speed of friggin' light whenever they go through their lectures, so you can't really keep up. But when you can, try to take paper notes. When you get really bored, and you're sitting in class, and all there is in front of you is a piece of paper, and your teacher is lecturing like I have just found that I get so bored that I'm like, wow, I might as well write things. Are they always the most relevant? Do I really need to be taking them? Not always, but it is something to at least get your brain around sort of-ish paying attention. It's at least better than trying to take notes on your laptop whenever you're bored or just not really in the mood because if I try to do that, 
it will just be a blank page. I will have 60 text messages sent and zero words written. Don't treat studying like a vacation, but also don't treat it like prison. Sometimes when I used to study, I used to force myself to keep going so that I could do basic human functions like pee. Like if I really had to pee, but I'm studying, I would be like, nope, you haven't gotten far enough. Until you complete section seven, you cannot get up to pee. Scary. So instead, I'm recommending to you and also to me that we meet in the middle a little bit. Like don't study in your bed because you won't get anything done, but also don't punish yourself. So therefore the in-between is treat yourself when you've done a good job or at least tried. If you motivate yourself to walk to the library to study in 15 degree weather, buy yourself a coffee or something that you actually like because I don't like coffee. There's enough misery in college. You don't need to add more by not allowing yourself to freaking pee. The last little tip I have is when you're really down bad and you have just noticed the hours tick by and you've done absolutely nothing, this is what you should do. Prepare your area, like get your textbook out, pull up your documents, eliminate distractions, but then if just hours of studying seems like too much, just break it into very little pieces. I do this in class a lot where I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my god, there's still an hour left, like you're kidding me. But then I reframe it and I'm like, well, in 15 minutes, there'll only be 45 minutes left. And that means two 15 minute cycles would have already passed. And then there's only three 15 minute cycles left. And so we're basically halfway. It's a whole thing, but it makes me feel better. So under the same guidelines, if you're studying or trying to do homework, what you can do is just set a timer for like 15 or 20 minutes, actually grind. Like force yourself to really, really focus and just be like, it's only 15 minutes, I can do that. And usually by the end of the 15 minutes, you'll realize like, oh, I'm actually kind of in the zone. I don't wanna stop now and have to restart. So you'll just keep going. The key takeaway for all of these tips is just lying to yourself. Like just lie to yourself so much that eventually you believe it's true and then you'll have to do it. I hope that these were helpful, but if they weren't, I just hope you took away the fact that everyone goes through these times where for whatever reason, you could be like the most motivated person ever. Like you could have one of those 70 step morning routines that includes meditation and taking 16 showers and working out for 45 hours. And still you'll have these days where you're just like, <laughs> let's navigate these challenges together. And if you want to see me continue to struggle, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I struggle on those apps every single day. I love you guys so much and bye.